last couple of, about the last year to 18 months, we've been working really hard on developing a strategic plan that we're going to take to the board. And part of that strategic plan is a mission, mission statement, which we believe encompasses what we should be here for. And that mission statement says to provide a best-in-class health care program offering excellent benefits, financial soundness, and innovative approaches to improving the health and well-being of our members. And I think that's what the plan is here for, for you guys. We know that the plan is used in different ways by you, the units, and by members. The units use our plan as a great recruiting tool and a retention tool. You know, I know as part of your benefits package, especially nowadays when health care healthcare costs are on the rise, it's important to be able to offer your employees a great health insurance package. And that's what we want to be able to help you guys provide. And we want to be able to help you guys provide that in the most affordable way as possible. And for members, it's more about utilizing those benefits. So we want to make sure that we're providing innovative programs, great benefits. And in addition to that, we want to make sure that the members know about and understand those benefits. Because if I'm a member and I need to use my benefits, it's not going to be very valuable if I don't know what those benefits are and what's available to me or how I can access those. Also, customer service. We really want to have a best-in-class customer service experience, and that's something that we're also focused in on uh, this year as well. And Jason Graham is going to be talking a little bit more about how we're going to try to accomplish that. We're providing some surveys and some questionnaires to units to get your feedback to make sure we're meeting your needs and the needs of your employees. Let's talk a little bit about our great past. This plan was created back in 1993 at the request of counties and cities in Alabama who were experiencing double-digit rate increases every year. So a lot of those type of entities came to William Ashmore back in the early 90s and said, can we get in the state employees health insurance plan? And William looked at it and said, well, that's not feasible. How about I just start a new plan that would allow, you know, cities and counties to be able to, to pool together their resources similar to the state employees and start that type of a plan. So that's what he did. It was established back in 1993. From 1993 until 2014, the plan was administered by the state employees insurance board. And during that time, on that board, there was a local government advisory committee that would look at how the local government plan was experiencing claims and, and, and benefits and what needed to be done. And that advisory committee would meet yearly and make recommendations to the State Employees Insurance Board who would implement those recommendations on a yearly basis. In 2015, the plan had grown so large that it was time for us to have our own board that administered the plan. So that's when the legislature created the Local Government Health Insurance Board in 2015. Those same advisory committee members were the first board members. Julie Krill was on that board, and, uh, and it's been a very successful uh, endeavor so far. We started out with just one employee. Currently, we've got 30 employees, and we're continuing to staff up in the areas that we need to do so. And of course, we provide coverage for counties and cities and eligible uh, quasi-governmental groups in Alabama. Some of those eligible quasi-governmental groups are, you know, fire, um, fire authorities, water authorities, housing authorities, E911, those type of entities that provide a public function. How does it work? So the board sets policies. We approve the benefits that would be provided to members. Uh, the board sets the premiums each and every year. We negotiate contracts with our providers, Blue Cross, Optum, United, Southland, and we also handle all the pills that come from our members and our units. 
The relationship between the board and units is units, you tell us who's eligible, which, which one of your employees are eligible employees that must be enrolled, that don't have other coverage, and of course, we will bill you for, for those employees. And the employer, you set the rate that you're going to charge your employee. Some of you units, you pay for 100% of single coverage. Some of you pay for 0% of single coverage, but that's totally up to you, the unit. And then the employee would go to their provider. They'll have to pay, you know, for medical care. They'll have to pay a copay, coinsurance, you know, that type of thing, whatever kind of medical care they're needing. And then the provider would bill the insurance company. They would send a claim to the insurance company who would adjudicate that claim. And then Blue Cross or Optum would in turn provide administrative services for the board and bill the board for those claims. Our enrollment history. We started back in 1993 with a little over 100 units and about 10,000 covered lives back in 1993. And throughout the years, we've seen steadily increases in the number of units that, that are in the plan, as well as the number of employees, uh, the number of total members, excuse me. So as of 2021, when this was written, we had 653 different units involved in the plan and a little over uh, about 60,000 total covered lives. And if, if you'll look there, there's a couple of spikes around 2000, 2001, and 2011, 2012 where enrollment increased a little bit more than normal, and we're going to talk a little bit about that here a little bit later. So how are our units broken down? So of the 653 different units that we have, we've got, we cover 54 of the 67 counties. We've got 222 municipalities, and I looked online, I think there's approximately 450 incorporated municipalities in Alabama, so we've got about half of those. And then we've got about 377 quasi-governmental entities. How do our, does our uh, employees stack up compared to those buckets? The municipalities have about 12,000 employees, counties account for about 11,000 employees, and the quasi-governmental entities account for about 8,000 employees. This is the total number of our subscribers. So we've got around 28,500 active employees enrolled in the plan. We've got about 1,250 non-Medicare retirees enrolled in the plan. And then also we've got about 1,250 Medicare retirees enrolled in the plan. And I know we're going to have some opportunities to hear from our vendors later today that gives you some more information about these particular plans. Total membership, about 58,500. Of those, 31,000 are what we term subscribers or active employees, Medicare retirees, non-Medicare retirees, and then around a little over 27,000 dependents who are covered in the plan. This is a biggie. This is, shows our total billed amount in fiscal year 2020. So for 2020, we had over $1 billion in billed claims, okay? And this is where it's good to be a part of a large plan like this because we get substantial discounts based on our relationships with our vendors, Blue Cross and Optum. So for the hospital bucket, there was $572 billion, uh, million dollars of uh, billed claims, but we received a 79% discount where it was only $122 million in a loud amount. In the physician bucket, we had $272 million of billed claims. There was a 55% discount through our uh, affiliation with Blue Cross, where we only, the allowed amount was only $124 million. Prescription drugs, that was $189 million of billed claims. And through our relationship with Optum, there was only $57 million allowed amount. And then on dental, there was about $15 million of billed claims 
uh, of which $10 million were allowed. So as you can see, there's substantial discounts that you receive as being part of this plan. The cost sharing amount, so as I said, the average network discount that we receive is 70%. So for every dollar that we're billed by a provider, 70% of it is written off through Blue Cross and Optum. So of that dollar, we pay the allowed amount is 30%. And of that 30%, the plan picks up 86% of that. So only 14% of, of that allowed amount is uh, paid by the member. This is a graph that kind of maps out what our um, call sharing percentage has been over the last nine or 10 years. As you can see on the left, we've hovered around the 12 to 14% amount that the member uh, picks up. That's a great benefit. Anytime you can get you know, under 20% of what the member pays, you know, 80% paid by the plan, that is a very, very rich plan. So let's compare our premiums to the national average. So for fiscal year, uh, excuse me, for 2020, the local government plan's preferred premium for single coverage was $472. For dependent coverage, for family coverage, it was $1,151. The standard premium was a little bit more than that, $519 and $1,310. But when you compare that to the national average, the national average was $623 for single coverage and over nearly $1,800 for family coverage. So that's 25% less than the national average for single coverage and 36% less than the national average for family coverage. So our rates have stayed historically much lower than the national average. This chart shows our premium history from the inception of the plan back in 1993. When William created the plan in 1993, he set the initial rate at the national average so there wouldn't have to be an increase for several years, and you can see that. It went, the plan went, I think, 10 years without having an increase in premiums. Now this shows you the national average uh, the single rate national average increase over that same period of time. So you can see around the year 2000, the national average started to exceed our average. And that accounts for one of the sharp increases in our enrollment back around that same time period. And when you compare it to the family rates, you can see that we've stayed well below the family rate national average throughout the years. Now this is going to compare our rate to the average rates in Alabama. That's our single uh, preferred rate. That's our family preferred rate over the years. This is Alabama's um, average rate over that same period of time. So you'll see we're well below that as well, 25% less currently. And then uh, with the family rate, we're 34% less than the current family average in Alabama. So the board met back in September of this year and had a, made just a couple of changes. We've sent, a, sent an email that acknowledges these changes. They increased the medical and dental uh, premium, including Southland premium, 5.9% for active employees and non-Medicare retirees. You guys should have already known about that. We sent that uh, out uh, a day or two after the board meeting. And the only other thing that they changed was they added coverage for in-state residential treatment centers for eating disorders cases approved by Blue Cross case management. What we're having to do before this was send those individuals out of state uh, to an inpatient facility. So this is really going to be no cost increase. It's just doing things a little bit differently to keep them in the state and not have to incur those um, expenses out of state. So to summarize the plan, our enrollment has somewhat leveled off, which is, which is fine. It's to be expected as we continue to get more and more of the counties and cities that are eligible for our plan uh, enrolled in the plan. We provide excellent medical benefits. Our substantial provider discounts of 70%, like I talked about earlier, the cost sharing ratio 
is a great ratio, 86 and uh, to 14 percent. Also, our premiums have been stable over the life of the plan. If you'll look up there, the the average annual rate increase for all years has been 4.1 percent, and for the past 10 years, it's been only 3.3 percent. So both of those are well below the national average. And the plan is very, very financially strong. Now, for the next few minutes, I want to talk about what we have in store for the future. We, what, what's this greater future that we're talking about? I look at it and kind of break it down into four different areas. Communications, programs, operating systems, and relationships. We're going to go through each one of these and talk a little bit about each one. Communication. For years, we've dealt mainly with the units and through the units. And we'll always continue to include you guys in everything that we do. Y'all are a huge part of our plan. You let us know who needs to be insured. You let us know who doesn't need to be insured. You work with us. You pay the bills. So you will always be a major part of our plan. But because of some of the new packages that we uh, and, and programs that we're implementing, we need to really develop a relationship with our members more than we have in the past. And it's going to be a, diff a difficult task. We need for the members to understand who we are, that they get their insurance through the local government health insurance board, not just Blue Cross. So, you know, that's going to be a, a, a big task for us to do because we want, we want our members to know when we send out a communication that, hey, the local government health insurance board, this is, the, this is the group that, you know, provides my benefits. I need to open this, or I need to pay attention to this email and not just delete it. And, you know, I think you guys are in the same boat as we are. COVID taught us a lot of things. We went from having all our meetings in our office, you know, every single day, meeting with our staff, meeting with our different committees, Blue Cross, Optum coming in, meeting with us face-to-face, -to, -face, to everybody was quarantined. We had to learn how to communicate when you know, we were all over the place and our vendors couldn't get to us. So it was difficult for us to start with. We weren't as uh, adept at those uh, communication and technology practices as some of our vendors were, but we've learned. Michelle has done a great job of learning and, and developing some, some new technological ways to, to reach members. So we want to be able to take advantage of those. We want, we've learned that you know, we don't have to go meet with a unit every four or five months. We can do some things telephonically. We can put WebExes out there. We can, you know, do a Teams meeting where we can, you know, communicate things uh, in a little bit uh, easier format. So this is going to help us develop that relationship with those members uh, in an easier format. Also with our units. We've gotten feedback in the past about some more instructional videos, you know, uh, how-tos. You know, we've got a lot of different forms. We want to make sure that you guys are aware of how to uh, fill out those forms, what the forms are supposed to be used for. So we're in the process. Michelle has developed a YouTube channel where she's got a few uh, uh, webinars already out there. She's working on more. That's going to walk you through the different ways to fill out forms, what forms should be used for. So please... Um, Please keep an eye out for that as well. So some of the programs that we're excited about. Everybody knows about our wellness program. That's been something that's been around for the last 10 years. When, when William Ashmore created this, the wellness program, the screening, he was innovative in what he was doing. He was, this was one of the first of those types of programs in the country. But it's been very valuable to be able to allow employees to be identified if they've got an at-risk condition. Um, you know, we've got a great, Jessica O'Donnell, our, our chief clinician who heads our wellness department, does a great job in, in getting that message out. We've got great response. We average about 85% wellness screenings every year, which is just unbelievable and, and hard to, you know, other states can't get there, but we can. And that's a lot to go... A lot of that is because of how you have helped us. A lot of that is some of the communications we've sent out. But it's been invaluable for that, those conditions to be identified. 
And I'll give you a personal example. I've been a state employee since 2013, and I've received a screening every year. The last two years, my cholesterol was high, not just medium. It got high, and I've been doing the exact same thing that I've always done, pretty, and I've probably eaten better than I've always, than I've ever eaten. But my cholesterol was really elevated, so now I understand and I can talk to my provider about, hey, I need to keep an eye on my cholesterol. What, what do I need to be doing? There are some things I need to be taking, what I need to be eating differently. So that's been something personal that's been very valuable that's been coming out, that came out of this wellness screening program. And the wellness screening program is, will still be a, a foundational and fundamental rock of our wellness program. That's not going to change. But we've added some different programs. And these programs are going to enable our members to be able to take advantage of their own health journey and to be in charge of their health journey. Uh, we've got Wonder Health, Verda, Blue Crosses, My Blue Health, the Enhanced Population Management, Teladoc, and we're looking at some other things as well currently that we've got in the hopper to help to help with some, some issues that we've identified. But what William has tasked, we've got an analytics committee at our uh, agency, and that's headed by Dustin Craig and Jessica O'Donnell. And William asked them a couple of years ago, he said, we've got to find a program that we can really have confidence in that can impact our two main cost drivers, and that is obesity and uh, diabetes. And so Jessica and Dustin started, you know, uh, investigating some programs, bringing in these different vendors to, to vet them. And after a long vetting process, we, we really we decided on Verda and Wonder Health. And Wonder Health is a, is a weight loss program that teaches you how to eat, and we've seen good success with that for people who have signed up on that. Verda is a program that can assist you in reversing type 2 diabetes, and that has been a fantastic program for people who have enrolled in that. And we're excited that, that uh, Verda is here today to be able to talk a little bit more about their program. We, we really want you to ask a lot of questions if you've got questions about it. We need your help notifying the members. We, we need to make sure your employees know about these programs and know how to take advantage of these programs. And then also the Blue Cross My Blue Health Enhanced Population Management Program. This is something that they set up really kind of just for us and helped us out with it. They're using it in other ways now, but it's, it's an, a way for them to engage uh, members with chronic conditions and get them in touch with health coaches to really be able to manage those chronic conditions and to help them through that, that journey. So that's a great program as well. We want to make sure you're aware of that. If you've got questions, ask me about it. Ask Ann Puxis is here from Blue Cross today. Ask Jessica O'Donnell about it. Uh, so we're excited about that program as well. So all these programs kind of dovetails nicely into our communication plan. That's why we need, you know, when our desire is to uh, reach the members, you know, really try to reach the members and so they can know about these programs that we've started. On the operational front, technology has come a long way uh, since the time the plan has been in existence. And, you know, everybody has a cell phone. Everybody has a cell phone. People, you know, you, you bank on your cell phone, you got a banking app. You enroll in, in types of insurance, you know, car insurance on your cell phone. I, closed, I bought a car the other day. I, I did the whole thing, the loan, on my phone. So technology has come light years since our plan was created. We want to be able to take a technological leap in that, in how we offer our plan and our services to you guys and to our members. Um, we want to lessen the administrative burden on you. We want to be able to incorporate more of that technology in the enrollment process. We've rolled out our online enrollment program, and Michelle is going to talk a little bit more about this later, and it's been good. It's, it's, it's helped us to be able to, to kind of streamline some things a little bit better. It provides you with real-time updates on where the enrollment uh, that you did online is in the in the enrollment process. So there's been some good things about that, but that's we want to really enhance that. Um, and so to that end, we have released an RFP for a benefit administration system. Uh, we did that last month. The responses were due last week. We received a lot of responses 
Uh, it's a lot of materials we got to go through, so our IT department's got their <laughs> work cut out for them, but it, we, we're really encouraged about this. We want to be able to, our goal is to be able to have a member. If, they, if, if, if I'm a member of the plan, which I am, and I have a child, you know, and I need to enroll that child, I want to be able to take my cell phone, snap a picture of that, or actually pull it up, you know, uh, fill out some fields in an app, that tells uh, us who my child is, who I am. And then if I need to uh, send in that birth certificate, I'm going to take a picture of that birth certificate on my phone and hit upload. It goes directly to us. And then the unit will be notified as well. Hey, David Hillier just recently added such and such to, to the plan. That is our goal. We, we want to be able to incorporate technology, go to a more digital footprint, less paper, um, and we know there'll always be uh, maybe even a unit, but certainly members that may need to, to submit things by paper. And we'll always have that capability to accept that paper format. Um, but that is our goal. And we hope to have that in place. Our goal is to have that in place by 1-1 of 2023, if not sooner. Uh, once we get into it and, and look what the implementation is going to be, uh, we may be able to revise that a little bit. But it all boils down to relationships. You know, we can implement all these new technology, new programs, but if we don't have the relationship with you, that you where you know about these programs or know about our technology, then it's not going to benefit the member very much. So we want to create, we want to cultivate, and we want to deepen our relationship with you guys. You're a huge part of our plan. We know, you know, Michelle is very aggressive in trying to get out the help fairs and, and different, um, different meetings with you guys to explain our benefits, but there's 653 of you. So we're going to need your guy, you guys' help as well. You're going to need to be our partner in understanding our benefits, our programs, and helping us push out that information uh, to, to your members. But we're excited about it. We know there are some challenges because of the number of units and the size of our membership, but we are, we are ready for this challenge, and uh, we're excited to be able to bring some of these new uh, technological advances and, and plans to you. And if you've got any questions, just run me down sometime during a break or during lunch. I'd love to talk with you about it, uh, but I appreciate you guys being here today. Thank you.